And I think a lot of the things that we learn as junior leaders that can be taught here at the military academy um, are things that are not very complicated. Real simple things like the principles of war. Everybody forgets the principles of war. No, don't forget them. I'll give you a good example. Foremost among the principles of war is the principle of the objective. When we get into big time trouble in all, everything that we do, and you can point to governments, you can point to general officers, you can point to almost anybody, and you can point to yourself too uh, in your everyday life if you forget the principle of the objective. What is it you're trying to do? Don't start throwing money or any other asset uh, manpower, anything, time, at anything, until you've first decided what the mission is. You can't get any private to do anything unless you first tell them what the mission is. If it's good for him, why can't we remember that stuff when, when we get to be high-ranking? A lot of the biggest mistakes, military, national security mistakes we've made, indeed in the last few years, too, you can point to the you can point to the mistake of forgetting what the objective is. Uh, service is an interesting concept. I think, it's a, I think it's a derivative. It's a second order issue. Uh, and it's very, very important that we don't forget it. I think the first order question is the notion of community. If you don't have a sense of community, uh, then the notion of sacrifice for it will be lost. If we are weak, if the United States is weak today in any fashion, it is because we have not harbored the notion of community in our communities. Um, I'll give you a good example. If you talk to any troop, any troop, anywhere, in any unit, he'll tell you the same thing. If you fought in combat, you know this to be true. You fight for the United States, sort of a given. You fight to accomplish the mission. I mean, you're given the mission, you've got to do it. But in the end, when, when, uh, when push comes to shove, when things get really, really tough in combat, you fight for each other. We shouldn't have to go to combat to foster the notion of fighting for each other. We should take the concept of being able to fight, for, of the imperative of fighting for each other, and teach our young people about that. We'll talk very briefly about that. Medal of Honor Foundation is in the process of completing a... Um, a project which was started in Erie, Pennsylvania about two years ago. It was, we were encouraged by the uh, GE Foundation uh, to go up to Erie, Pennsylvania and work with the school district, which was one of, the, one of the school districts in the country most vulnerable, most at risk because of poor economic conditions and a, a failure to teach the notions that make us great in the school system. It had nothing at all to do with the school district. They were working really hard. But this is a place, by the way, where uh, GE manufactures railroad engines, where 85% of the children in school are at risk. Single parent families, on food stamps, parents in jail, drug addicts, I mean, really a rough place. Where uh, kids were not going to school, dropout rate was in, and N was a very large percentage of the total. And uh, we went up there, sat down with the school district, and said that we would like to participate in getting you guys, we'll do whatever we, want, we need to, the Medal of Honor Foundation, to create a civics curriculum so that we can teach exactly what you're talking about. Notions of service and sacrifice not when the kids are already gone, it's too late to get them then, but in middle school and in high school. The school district jumped into it. Volu teachers and administrators volunteered to work after school steadily for two years and produced an extraordinary curriculum for teachers, a vehicle for teachers to teach those notions, but not in your face. Teach it in interesting kind of kinds of ways using oral histories of Medal of Honor recipients, many of whom are now gone, and to create um, lesson plans around uh, the notions of service and sacrifice and using Medal of Honor recipients as role models and things that they said into the camp. This is a, this is a shaggy dog story, but I'll cut to the chase. The thing was finished and it was taught to 
selected kids, really bad kids, in the Erie School District, and then videotaped uh, students asking them what did they think of this curriculum. And these are hard-bitten, cynical kids coming from dilapidated families, very bad neighborhoods, having been taught basic notions that we're talking about. These kids looking into the camera saying things like, I didn't know this about the service and sacrifice of people who came before us, about what it took to make the United States of America, about notions of free speech, what the founders had to do in order to get us today to where we are today. You know, at the bottom of the Declaration of Independence, we taught these kids. It says, we pledge our, our, our uh, fortunes, our lives, our sacred honor, and many of them gave up their lives and certainly all gave up their fortunes in order to create a country where people would, would be free. Kids looking into the camera saying, I didn't know that. And then accusatorily pointing at the camera saying, why didn't I know that? Now they do. I think we have to work harder to teach young people notions of service and sacrifice at a very young age. And people in the military and cadets at West Point can be instrumental in teaching. I know a lot of cadets teach. But when they grow up to not forget where they came from, not forget that you've got to be taught about service and sacrifice, about community. You've got to be taught it if you're going to remember it when you're older. I mean, we're all influenced by people around us. That's why we have the uh, United States Military Academy at West Point. It's, again, a sense of community. I think you, br you bring to adulthood what you learn as a young person. If you're taught uh, at home to be uh, uh, lazy and not pay any attention to uh, important things like community, uh, sacrifice of others, notions of freedom, if you're taught that at home, uh, either directly or indirectly, th that's what you're going to think when you grow up. That's one reason why uh, we know watching cadets go from being plebes to being firsties and then new lieutenants. They're not the same people anymore. They were internally, uh, but because they were taught properly, otherwise they wouldn't be here. But the young people, when they come here, and as a result of that, as a result of being exposed to military officers who've served, uh, civilian professors who harbor the same notions, uh, who are being around thousands of people who want to impart the, the, the ideas of intellectual acuity and asking the right questions and don't jump off doing something until you know you're doing the right thing. All that, we know we, know we can get leaders, we can get patents out of that, out of that crew come here as plebes. We can, because they were starting with a good basis because they were taught when they were very, very young by their parents to do the right thing. I'm no, in, in this respect, I'm no, no different than General Schwarzkopf was my father served, and I was going to serve. That's all there is to it. I, no, nothing's free. Being able to say what you want to see, say is not free. Uh, my father taught me that. I think General Schwarzkopf's father taught him that too. Uh, and so you got a little leg up when you're taught the right things when you're young. That's why the project with the Erie, Pennsylvania School District is so important. The younger you get them to teach them, about what's important in life, uh, the, the freer we will be in the, in the, run, in the end run.